Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasi here. So 13 different ways to lower your CPCs with Google Ads fast. Now CPCs is literally one of the most important things that directly impacts your campaign's performance and your campaign success with Google Ads. Simply because the higher the CPC, the higher you're paying per click and that means you're going to have to pay much more than the average person or just somebody who is doing good with Google Ads in order to get that potential potential customer on your website. Obviously, when that happens, you're paying more overall to get people onto your website. So you're going to have higher cost per purchases, which then ends up eating into your ROAS, which means you'll have a lower ROAS. So exactly what is the solution to this? How do you keep your CPCs low and at the bare minimum? So you are paying very low, but getting as many quality customers as somebody who would be paying higher CPCs. Well, I'm going to be giving you 13 different ways to lower that CPC. And I have personal experience with this because if you have seen some of my past videos on this YouTube channel or in my Google Ads Mastery course, which you can get at gadsmastery.com, the link is also in the description below. My average CPCs range from anywhere between 15 cents to 20 cents. Yes, you heard that right, around 15 to 20 cents. That's simply because I've pretty much mastered the art of having low CPCs with my Google Ads campaigns and my performance for these campaigns flourishes as a result. But let's just get right into it and figure out how to lower your CPCs. First thing you'll have to do in order to find any types of success with these 13 ways, however, is to destroy the like button down below and subscribe while hitting that bell notification if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos. Okay, hopefully you have done that, but let's start off with way number one and that is landing page optimization. Now wait, hold on, before you leave this video thinking this is going to be very basic, hear me out. Exactly what is landing page optimization? With Google Ads, that means you want to have relevant keywords for your products within your titles and your descriptions and even your image alt text. Meaning, if you're selling a dog necklace, make sure you do not mention the word a cat necklace or giraffe necklace in the description or in the titles or in the alt text. Simply because if Google's algorithm crawls over that, it's going to think your product has something to do with a cat necklace or a giraffe necklace. Because of that, it's going to start showing up for those keywords. And that's how you increase CPCs because nobody's going to click on your ad when that happens. And your quality score is also going to suffer as a result. So make sure your keywords, whatever you're using, they're relevant. And in addition, make sure you have high quality images, but that too, different images from your competitors. Again, I'm not going to really go in depth into that here because I've made videos on that. My Google Ads master course goes deep into that as well but moving on to number two way to lower your cpcs and that is to set a maximum bid limit or a target roas that's a maximum target ROAS. So many people forget to do this. They just uncheck that box completely. And Google, because it's a business, wants to spend as much of your money as possible. So it's going to run through that budget as fast as possible with a bid, which it thinks is the right amount. And you won't be surprised to find out that the right bid, which Google thinks should be what your campaign is running at, is around a dollar, even two dollars or more. And that's simply because Google Ads is a business. It wants to get as much of your money as possible at a very fast pace. So because of that, it bids extremely high and we don't want to give Google that power. So we set a maximum bid limit. If you're using smart shopping, you want to set a maximum target ROAS percentage because the bare minimum without the box checked is around 250%. So you want to set that at around 300% or more. Moving on to tip number three, and that is to bid less than 55 cents for majority of the products. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I recommend something called a general testing campaign. And within that general testing campaign, you wanna have a bid of around 40 cents to 50 cents, nothing above 50 cents. And in most cases, nothing above 55 cents if it's a higher ticket product like 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 and more. Because I've found a lot of success selling multiple high ticket items and products on my store with a bid of less than 50 cents. In fact, I've had those products be winning products which were over a thousand dollars at a bid of 20 cents, 30 cents. So that definitely works. You wanna be bidding lower because if you bid higher than this, it's very hard for you to become profitable and in the end, profit is king. So make sure you don't bid above 55 cents, but this brings me to point number four, which is smart shopping campaigns with a 300% T ROAS. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you want to set a maximum T ROAS. Otherwise, Google is just going to set it to the base amount. And in a lot of the times, it might not perform as well. It might even perform lower than that. So you want to kind of set that limit up for your campaign so that Google does not have that much control over it and just set a 
Smart Shopping came in at a T-ROAS of around 300%. This is what we have found to be working the best for both my personal e-commerce stores as well as my clients e-commerce stores via my agency. And if your e-commerce source does over 30K a month and you want somebody to run your Google Ads for you, just go on to my website, yourroommarketing.com to book a call with my team and we can look into that. But 300% T-ROAS is ideal in this situation. In most cases, it works extremely well. But moving on to the fifth tip, which you guys have already seen now, which is the Skags campaigns. And a Skags campaign is a single keyword ad group campaign designed for search, meaning this is gonna be a search campaign. And what the main benefit of this is not to get sales. A lot of the times, a Skags campaigns won't even get you sales. The main benefit is that search campaigns, specifically Skag campaigns, actually feed data to the shopping campaigns and to the smart shopping campaigns. This is something I found to be true time and time again where a campaign started to perform even better once a SCAG campaign was launched for that given product or multiple products within that campaign simply because now the SCAGs campaign is ranking for multiple different keywords and this is indirectly feeding data to those shopping campaigns because you want to understand that even though these are different campaigns they all run inside of one house which means your entire google account so because these campaigns are within one google account they have the ability to kind of transfer over data and speak with each other indirectly without you knowing. So this is why Skag's campaigns are really beneficial. You wanna definitely have them for winning products. But this brings me to tip number six, and that is you want to improve your quality score in general. Now, the first tip was landing page optimization, but quality score goes a little bit more in depth than that. Quality score can be improved by having a better landing page experience, meaning having people stay on the website or the landing page for a longer period of time. Number two, having a high bid that is competitive, but not so high that you are unprofitable as a result. And number three, having a high CTR, not a CPC. So let me change that. CTR, meaning you want to have high CTRs, which of course come from the images that you choose. These three things make up the quality score. The higher your quality score, the better it is going to be for you to rank well within your audience and within your your competition and to get more sales profitably but this brings me to step number seven and that is simple retargeting you don't want to go crazy retargeting with google ads because you literally have to set the audiences within a shopping campaign or a search campaign directly and the beauty about google ads is you can retarget and do cold traffic targeting within the same campaign without really interfering with the data in any way so that is really beneficial if you want to know more about how to do this you can get my google ads mastery course or watch the free video on my YouTube channel but this brings me to point number eight and that is you want to exclude certain locations if your campaign has a lot of data already you'll start to notice if you go within the location section within your campaign that there are certain locations which despite whatever you do just don't perform and I only recommend doing this if you have over five figures of ad spend worth of data meaning over ten thousand dollars of ad spend because anything less and there's just not enough significant data to exclude an entire location location because when we exclude locations we are actually excluding cities or sometimes even states so you want to make sure that ad spend is over 10,000 on a given campaign once that is the case then you can go in and start excluding location this is really beneficial for lowering the cpcs because some locations have extremely high cpcs but little to no results and you want to get rid of them asap but that brings me to the next point which is you want to exclude certain hours of the day again something where you need five figures of ad spend on a certain campaign or more but sometimes what you will notice is that one certain time period of a day doesn't perform at all for me on my e-commerce store it was around the time period of 11 p.m to 12 a.m almost every single day but specifically on thursdays and this is something i figured out after spending over two hundred thousand dollars on a single campaign and that led me to just excluding that time period out completely but again you need to have enough data and in this case five figures of data before making certain decisions like that and this can reduce your cpc significantly and one reason why my cpcs were around 15 to 20 cents was because of these things right here but moving on to tip number 10 and that is location settings now this is different from exclusions because when you're actually setting up the campaign or within the setting section directly you want to choose the second and circle for the target option in order to only target those people that are living within the location which you target so you don't want people searching within the united states from a different country you want people living within the u.s and searching within the u.s that's the best way to keep your cpc slow bringing to point number 11 and that is you want to segment products based on the profit margins if you have product with various different types of profit margins 20 30 40 dollars you want to segment them into their own campaigns and you want to do something called a product 
impact ad group campaign. So one campaign has $20 profit margin products, next one 30 and so forth and bid differently for them. Again, you can watch how to do this exactly on my YouTube channel or in my mastery course, but segmentation really helps lower the CPCs. This brings me to the second to last point on my list, which is Google Merchant Center promotions. You want to go inside your Google Merchant Center and on the left side, if you go to the promotion section, you'll see that it likes to create an actual promotion. You want to do things like free shipping or one thing I really like to do is certain percentage off on all products. And what happens is when you do this, the promotion actually ends up showing on the shopping campaigns directly. So that really helps boost that CTR, which then improves your quality score and also gets you sales at a much profitable rate. This brings me to the final point on the list, and that is one of the easiest points ever. Just add a lot of negative keywords. Now, when I say a lot, that doesn't mean just start adding negative keywords right from the beginning. You want to wait a certain time period, and that a certain time period is until you start getting data. Once you start getting data with your campaigns, only then do you have the ability to go in and start adding negative keywords. I only base this off of the amount spent and the data I'm getting. If the keywords are unprofitable, then I'll just exclude them. And this kind of adds to the negative keywords list. As I do this more and more often, I notice my CPCs start to go down because of this. But that is pretty much it for lowering your Google ad CPCs. Again, if you're doing over $30,000 in sales and want somebody to run your ads for you, just go ahead and book a call with our team at yourroommarketing.com. But if you found any type of value in this video, destroy the like button and destroy that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time.